Hey guys, welcome to another video by Creed Poser, of course me, yeah. This video is all about my hidden blade. It's not the best, but it's actually not the worst. It works, and you can actually stab things with it, which I thought was really cool. I thought of, I thought of the entire design myself, I built it all myself, it took me quite some time to finish it. If you look, it's pretty thick, it's pretty bulky around the edges, but hey, it does the job, right? So, I'm going to be breaking it down with you. I'm going to be telling you how I, how I made it, and I'm going to be showing you the parts that you're going to need, sort of. Okay, first off, I got this. There's this, it's a little arm brace, it goes, or a uh, wrist brace. It has like a metal, some of them have metal, some of them are plastic parts right in like the wrist area, sort of along here. And uh, that's going to stop you from going forward. So you want to open it up and there's this little flap on the inside, right about there. And then there's where you can take it out. Now what I did was I screwed a bottom base into the handle at the very edge of the part so that I can wrap this or, or I can wrap this over this so that it doesn't hurt me with the screws. I used as you've seen probably with many with many Assassin's Creed videos about making hidden blades, a lot of people use drawer, drawer slides. Well, I did too. This was what I used for my bottom base. I just measured it, I, just, I basically just measured it, cut it, and stuff like that. And then what I did is, I went to, I went to the store and I got some metal that was going to be durable so that it wouldn't really break with on impact or bend, yet it wasn't really super thick or expensive. I ended up getting this pretty thick and you can use a dremel to cut it I mean I fried my dremel cutting it because I put too much pressure on it but yeah this is what I got it's really useful and you have a lot of extras when you're done so I mean I'm probably gonna, I'm thinking about making another hidden blade with the same stuff just different design now for this part right here I just had some leftover some leftover sheet metal and if you guys are wondering what the white and brown stuff is on here it's this spray on glue this metal glue I tried to put on it but it just it was really moist for a really long time so it wouldn't stick but I'm but I used that that's the scrap of another project that I ended up making a shield out of so you see it's got like a grate on the back where you put the straps and everything. It's actually really cool. And I made the shield for Airsoft Wars so that I can defend myself. But I wish that it turned out to be bigger so that I could defend more. Anyway, back to this. I used standard zip ties for this. I went to the store and got bought some Velcro straps for this because I found out that just having this made the back end of this really wobbly and it would swing around a whole lot. So if you get one, if you get some Velcro straps and just wrap it around your arm, it'll be good. Now, how the now how this works, I really improvised with the lock. I used scrap parts of my of my drawer slider, and I use this piece. No, not this piece. That's the. I use this piece here for the lock for the uh, sides right here and here and what I did was actually you can see where I cut it what I did this is the outermost part it's the smallest part in the entire thing the entire drawer slide you really only need a 12 inch drawer slide which is like probably one of the smallest you can get um, depending on how big you want it to be or it also depends on if you want it over wrist or not. Oh, like on top of your wrist or uh, on the back, on below your wrist. 
I mean, my side can come over here like Assassin's Creed. Now, these are going to come out. They're rails for the middle piece here, and they run along it. You don't need those. Okay, I made it so that you didn't need them. Now, if you can see it, there's like those two little hooks or whatever. I left a little bit of this. I left a little bit of this piece on my blade so that it has so that those little hooks that you saw earlier, the ones right there and there, have something to latch onto. So that just doesn't go free balling and just slide all the way out. And so it has something to stop on. The rubber band, you guys would be, might be wondering, what's the rubber band for? Well, the rubber band is actually to keep, because without the rubber band, this piece right here just goes straight down. It goes straight down, it doesn't latch on any of my holes. And you want to make multiple holes, probably merge them all into one big hole so that you can get it every time. So the rubber band kind of bends it this way in order for this to kind of go at a slanted angle. Now, I really used a lot of duct tape for this. I used a lot of duct tape to hold down. Hold on. Turn on the light. I used a lot of duct tape to hold down my spring. And um, I put just like a nail will work. I put something in there so I have something to run along so it doesn't just freely move. Uh, and then I just cut these holes and zip tied all the way around the bottom and then I duct taped over it just so that they could stay. Now, now on to the fun part. What it does is this hidden blade, what you do is I haven't attached any strings or anything onto it yet. So pretty much you push this down and pull it at the same time and then it will slide out. It will run along those two edges and then come across and latch like so and then so it's going to end up being like this it's a little bulky you know but hey it stays really good and there you can see the other part of it and look you can still see that it's just not coming out and it's not going back in, and that's really what I was focusing on. It is going to be really hard with the springs in the way, so it's going to move a little, I mean not the springs, the screws in the way, so it's going to be slower to to move it. And to put it back, you just simply lift up the lock and kind of push it back down. There's going to be that spot where the screws catch on. You hit against like your hand or something like that, and it comes back, and then you... I messed with it and it'll lock. It'll lock again. Like I said, it's pretty bulky. You know, it's not the best thing in the world. I thought for my first attempt that it was pretty good. You know, very effective. I made this because me and my friends are big, huge Assassin's Creed fans, and uh, we created our own like little guild, or whatever. Things you'll need. You will need. A 12 inch, however, however long drawer slide. You will need a drill. You will need some piece of metal that. You will need some piece of metal that acts as your blade. And if you want dirt, it depends on your design. Varies on your blade a lot, actually, because it depends on if you want dirt, uh, duration, thickness, or um uh texture or like um or um exactness if you want exactness you want to go with the small aluminum ones or hell make a plastic one or something because with those ones they're small and they can be more accurate these can be accurate too but it's going to take a lot of work um if you want something that's durable then you want to get one of these maybe this is just a piece of steel that's just you know, like a that's just like that. You're gonna need sheet metal, wood, or plastic, something that can cover this, something that can cover the drawer, 
the drawer slides. And then, last but not least, you're going to need a bandsaw or a Dremel or some way of cutting metal because you need to cut this, this, and the sheet, and the sheet metal. The sheet metal is actually really easy. What I did was I just took a pair of tin snips. I like measured it out, took a punch, uh, took some tin snips, and cut it all out like that down the line, back here and everything. And I I bent it in later, but because it it was really bothering me, as you can see, I kind of bent it at the corners too, especially on this one because they were really poking into me. And then for the holes. What I did was I, ooh, if I can find it, hmm, let me see if I can't find it here, well, anyway, what I did was I took an old throwing knife that broke, like the handle broke on it, but the uh, blade was still good. And I just kind of marked the places I wanted my holes, and I took, I set it right there over one of these holes, so I wouldn't damage my work table a whole lot. Of course, I already did. And then what I did was I took a hammer and I just pounded it in. Um, and then you make, you want to make sure that you mark. I didn't do this, and it ended up. See how it kind of, like you kind of dips out or whatever. It kind of comes out. You want to make sure when you're doing that, you hit them on the outside. Like you go ahead and mark where, which one's going to be your outside, and which one's going to be your which side's going to be your inside of your sheet metal, so that when you hit the hammer, they can go. You can put them in on the inside part, so it goes in and not out. It's going to be really helpful. I just use a standard hammer. You're going to want a whiteboard or something if you want to write down because that's what I did is I wrote down a bunch of different lock designs and I thought that this one would be the smallest one but it turns out it wasn't. I'm making my new one on an Altair based hidden blade with the um, Altair designs which you can find on Google just type in Altair Hidden Eight Hidden Blade Designs, and it's basically it's hard to explain. It's like it's like this little it's like um, think of think of something that's like this sort of. It's like this to start off with, but it's like connected, so it like starts off like this, or it starts off a little bit tighter than that, but when you press on these two kind of comes out like a pair of scissors it's like that but it's longer and I'm going to try and find one that's smaller uh, so that's what I'm going to be making my next one off of I'm just going to like leave some room on the sides for it to come out and I'm going to press it and then we'll, then like make a small latch to lock it on both when it's open and closed and I think that's going to make it smaller and it's gonna make it pretty neat so yeah thank you for watching my hidden blade tutorial and I have to bug me and my friends I don't think we're gonna make that parkouring video until um well I'm gonna try and get on their butts about it because it hasn't snowed yet over here so yeah also if you want to attach a string onto one of these where you pull it I highly recommend you use just a normal keychain ring because if you if you use like um one of those if you use like a an actual ring then it works still but if you want to wear that ring to something else you would have to snip it off and go wear it so I recommend you use these well, thank you for watching my video. This is Creed Poser, signing out.